We could win this war. We can win this war? OK, well, joining us from Orlando, Florida, is the man in that clip, Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. No, but he also crazy. says, with a trademark, make women great again for women. Are Are we great? Great? Are we make women great again. But they're going to do a three-day seminar for women led by all men. <laughs> in mansplaining news, a three-day conference for women led by men hopes to make women great again. How the 22 convention will make you the greatest you ever. Raise your femininity by 500%. First of all, how is a man supposed to tell a woman how to be the ultimate woman? Well, women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, not my yes, words. Me too. Like how to land a husband, <gasps> how to lose weight, how to pop out a bunch of kids. Why do men think they need to fix the problems of women? Well, it says the world's ultimate event for women. Yeah, Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. It's mansplaining palooza. And say no to the toxic, bullying, feminist dogma. <laughs> Taught by men to make women great again. Taking the stage now is the founder of the 22 Convention. You're in for a treat, Mr. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. The first president of the Manosphere. It's run by all men, Surprise. which promises to, quote, make women great again. This course is guaranteed to raise your femininity by 500%. Together, we will make women great again. Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. She said there's nothing... Welcome back to the 22 convention at 21 Summit being held for the first time ever to make women great again. And our next speaker is now, as of yesterday, an alumni speaker of the 21 convention. This will be his first time, of course, speaking at the 22 convention. He's been a dating coach for women and men for over five years, for half a decade. He is a founder of Bulldog Mindset and runs a YouTube channel, big YouTuber with over a quarter million subscribers. And he's here to help make women great again. Without further ado, please let me welcome for the first time ever to the 22 convention stage, John Samez. Thank you. All right. So I didn't know I was going to be doing this talk, so I, I put it together pretty quickly. But I was trying to think of a topic to do a talk to women on. And so I thought, what's the thing that women ask me the most about? As, uh, as I'm talking to him whenever I'm doing coaching. And it, and it tends to be like how to nab a top 10, a top 5% guy. So really a high value guy. This is something that, especially younger women, don't seem to, to know how to do uh, anymore today. And you know what I've found is that a uh, majority of women want the top 5%, top 10% of, of guys, and they can get the, the lower tier guys, but getting a top guy is, is something that's, that's pretty difficult. So I figured, hey, let's, let's talk about this. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what it's about is you know, locking down a high value guy. And especially, I think it's very relevant today because of all the dating apps and the hookups and that, that culture, like it or not, what ends up happening is that it actually becomes you know, difficult for, for both parties, right? Most men that I coach complain that they can't get any woman unless they are a top 5% guy, which I'll talk about here, because most women only want guys that are in the top really 20%. They don't even see guys that are below that. And then women complain that they have access to all these guys now like they've never had before, but as far as getting a, a high value man and then getting him to stick around, and not just see them one time, that's, that's the biggest complaint. So that's, uh, this talk is gonna try and help solve that, that problem from the female perspective based on what I've learned. So who am I? I'm John Sanmez. I run a company called Bulldog Mindset where I mostly teach personal development for men, uh, teach them how to be men again today and help them to get rid of the victim mindset. It's really based in stoic philosophy and I work on kind of the three areas of fitness, uh, finances, and then relationships, dating. So I, I do a lot of coaching in, in this space, and I hear lots of stories. I interact with a lot of men, a lot of women, and, and 
hear how things go down. And I always do a lot of research. Whenever I get the chance to look at someone's phone and see their messages on their dating app, that gives me a lot of information. So why can I talk about this? So I was actually, what you're seeing here is some screenshots from a YouTube channel that I've been, uh, that I was invited to start a a interviewing like beauty pageant queens and, and different girls that are having trouble, again, really locking down a high value man. And so I've had a lot of experience coaching women and helping them to, to solve this problem. And yeah, so you know, I feel like I've got a pretty good, pretty good handle on this. And then, you know, also, I tend to be one of, one of the guys that the women try to have tried to lock down in the past. And so I kind of have some experience from that inside of what, for me, would, would be appealing, what, what could, could snab me in a, in a, a snare. But, so let's talk about what makes a top 5% man. So what makes a top 5% man, what I'm talking about here, because I know that's not a, a familiar term, is a guy that has a bunch of things going for him that, that generally make him more attractive or, or better than, than most men that are out there. You know, financial is one aspect of it. It's not 100% it's not of it, right? You know, maybe a guy that's making over six figures today would be in the top 5% category or runs a business or has even really good financial ambitions. Like he's got the potential of, of really making it big, right? Because the financial aspect is, is definitely important. Physical, this is, these are like doctored images of giga chads. <laughs> so, you know, again, uh, being a top 5% guy is going to be is going to be somewhat, you know, this is going to be a guy that's ideal physically, right? To to some degree, better than average. Most most men today are overweight and and out of shape, and and you know, a lot of times this comes down to just uh, something that people can't control. Unfortunately, I tell guys this all the time when I'm coaching them. I'm like, look, you can be the best that you can, but you know, you can't make yourself over six feet tall if you're not over six feet tall. And unfortunately, most women want guys that are over six feet tall, right? Even though it's only like, what, 10% of the population or so. Same thing with facial genetics and, and things like that, or, you know, hair, balding, right? You can't control some of those things, but there are a lot of things that can be controlled regardless of whether it's fair or not. This is what, what in general, that I have found that, that women want and what makes a guy top 5%. And then social, right? Social skills, confidence, charisma, Status. These are the things that we can change, and that a lot of men here learn and and develop over time. But most women want a guy that is socially calibrated, that can handle himself, especially a guy that has a high amount of status, right? Think a rock star. A rock star is always going to be like the top of the tier of 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 guys as far as desirability to women. So, the reason why I'm saying all this is because all this is just to say that what I'm talking about in this presentation is how to get the guy that you actually want, not, the, not settling. So basically, top 5% uh, guy is, is what most women want. So the problem with top 5% men, how many of you have seen the video from Tommy Lauren's PSA? Right, OK. So you, Tommy Lauren did this video attacking men and her complaints, it's kind of interesting. I, I did a response video, but her complaints are actually valid, right? A lot of guys in the red pill kind of community said a lot of bad things about what she said, but I said, no, no, these, these are accurate complaints. They're accurate com complaints. The, the thing that they're missing and that she was missing, what the, these are accurate complaints that she had railed against what I would say is a top 5% guy. Because she complained about things. She said, well, you know, you, you don't, you don't text us back, or you like you don't set up a date, like you don't meet in person, or you don't respond, you don't value value. That was a, a big thing that, that she said. So she was basically making all these complaints about men that she was interacting with, but she was interacting with top five percent of guys because she she that was her standard. And so most guys will gladly text you back. Most guys will gladly chase after you and buy you flowers and, and treat you great and definitely want to meet you in person and will worship you and, and value you. But a top 5% guy won't. And uh, I'll talk about why. But, 
but yeah, but she highlighted a lot of the, the issues that, that I found that, that are true. And it's, it's kind of ironic because a lot of the things that she talked about are things that women do in general to men, right? Uh, not text them back, what, why is it not getting back to, you know? And, and a lot of it is, is the exact same reason I'm gonna tell you why, uh, why it applies to top 5% guys. So, so the biggest thing is that they have selection and they use it. So the reason why a, a guy in this category doesn't text back is because he's got 15 other women that he's texting at the same time. It's not, I didn't create this world that we live in, but this is the truth of the situation. I'm gonna tell you what the truth is. So that's why he didn't text back. It's not because he's not interested, it's just because you scrolled, he scrolled down through his phone and he didn't see your text or forgot about it because he's got another girl that he's talking to. And a lot of top 5% guys have sex with many women. So the reason why I bring this up is because the biggest weapon against like to get men locked down in the past has been sex. But if you're a guy that is able to have sex with a lot of women, you're not really gonna care if one particular woman uh, gives it up. It, it's not gonna be something that's gonna lock you down uh, like it might have worked in the past. And it will work though on, and the reason why I bring this up is the bottom tier of men, uh, they, they will be slaves to, uh, to this if you, if, you, if you give them this, right? Uh, but it doesn't work with top 5% guys. Um, and then also, they know their value, right? Uh, that, that, that's kind of a dangerous thing is, is most guys don't know their value, but a guy that has had a lot of success with women and knows that he's within the, the top range, he's gonna know what he's worth. And so it, it's gonna be a lot harder for him to, you know, m most guys actually, so taking at it from the, the other perspective is that, you know, most of the guys that I coach, uh, unfortunately, like especially if they're married or in their long-term relationship, but most of the guys that are married that, that I coach, when I go back and I go through their story and I, and I hear you know, how they got to where they are, especially if they're having trouble, relationship trouble, it turns out that the first girl that they had sex with, that was the girl that they married, right? Basically the first girl that ever accepted them, that's the girl that they married because they didn't have options. So they, didn't, they weren't really discerning, they didn't really have much of a choice. And so a guy that knows his value is gonna be more discriminating, right? Whereas a guy that doesn't know his value he's gonna accept whatever he can get. And then, you know, they don't need long-term relationships. A lot of guys settle into long-term relationships. Again, you know, I'm just giving you the straight truth there, but because they don't, they need a reliable way to get sex. They need uh, consistency. And if you don't need that, <laughs> then, uh, then, then you don't really need an LTR for, uh, for a lot of guys. It doesn't mean that, that the guy isn't interested in LTR, it's just that he doesn't need one, and that, that makes a huge difference. So let me talk about some of the mistakes that women make, and this is really where, uh, where I try to help women that, uh, that are struggling to lock down guys and to actually get the guy that they want. The first one is uh, giving up sex way too early and easily which it might, be, it might sound kind of funny me saying this, considering that it's like conflicting forces, right? When I coach women, I, I tell them to basically do the opposite of what I am helping guys do, right? It's like, it's, it's two forces battling each other, right? I'm teaching guys how to actually counter this, and I'm teaching women to hold firm. Uh, you know, that's just how the battle goes, right? But I was just, uh, I just had a, a girl that just reached out to me on, on Instagram, she had damned me, and she had asked me, she knew that I did some coaching in, in this area, and you know, she was flirty, whatever, and then she was like, and then she's, I, I, I feel like there was something else that, that she had, and she, she asked me this question, and she says, hey, uh, you know, I have a lot of trouble with, with dating. And I was like, well, I thought, okay, she's just looking for some validation here, so I looked at her, profile and she's a good looking girl, you know, she's like in her twenties, she's you know, she shouldn't have any problem with dating. So I'm like, okay, all right, sure. You have a problem with dating, whatever. Tell me, what's your problem with dating? And she's like she's like, no, I just like I just I can't uh, I I just I'm not successful with dating. And so I was like, okay, well how many do you go on a lot of dates? Do you have trouble getting dates? I can't imagine that's the case. She's like, no 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 I have a lot of dates. 
so I was like, well, what is your trouble with dating then? And, uh, and she says, well, you know, guys ghost me all the time. And again, I'm looking at her profile, and I'm like, why would, like, that doesn't seem, seem correct, right? You know, why would guys ghost her? They're, they're going to respond to her, her messages. She must be just, like, seeking. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So ghosting is, is like when you just stop texting someone out of the blue, right? You just you ghost them, you know. So she had a lot of guys that were, were doing this. And, you know, I, I said, well, you know, how many dates did you go on last week? She says three. I say, Let, send me the pictures of the guys that, that she had gone on dates with. And they were all like, I mean, they were all like prime specimen guys, right? It's, you know, her <laughs> access to the dating app. I was like, okay, okay. Right? And, and, you know, she was a good looking girl, so I could, I could see that. But, like, there wasn't any average shows in there, right? And so I asked her, I said, you know, honestly, out of the three dates that you went on last week, how many, how many guys did you go home with? And, you know, it took, her, it took her about five minutes to answer that one. And then finally I see the little dots, and she's like, two out of the three. And I said, well, that's your problem. It's like, you're, you're, you're going out with these guys. And, you're, and she's selecting top 5% guys, right? And these guys are having sex with a lot of women, and so she's just one woman to them. So there, there's nothing special. She doesn't have any respect for herself. She's trying to win their validation. She's trying to get them to like her by doing the exact wrong thing, which is by giving it up, right? Not saying that, you know, that, that she, she couldn't do that. I'm just saying that like, that's how she's trying to gain they gain them, and they're not respecting her uh, because of that. Uh, so I worked with her, set her a little bit straight, said, hey, wait a minute, you know, maybe like, maybe like make him chase a little bit, you know, stuff your mother should have taught you, but I guess not. And, you know, and, and it worked out a lot better for her. But the, the point here was like, you know, when, when, I, when I told the story to some of my guy friends, they're like, this is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I would never ghost a girl that looked like that. And I was like, well... <laughs> You wouldn't ghost the girl. That <laughs> I was like, and if she just reaches out to some average guy, yeah, he's not gonna. He, and 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 she goes out on a date with him, and he has sex with her. She's gonna. He's gonna call her back the next morning and, and see how she's doing and see if she wants to go out again, right? But a guy that is in the category of of being in the top five percent, which is the guy that all women want, is gonna behave differently, and that's why. You know, that's why this whole thing, that's why I decided to make this whole talk. So, next mistake is trying to be an alpha woman to attract an alpha man. This is one that Tommy Lauren was doing in that, in that video as well. And a lot of women do. They think by having a high powered career and doing the same things that men do, that they're going to attract a man. A man does not want to sleep with another man. And that's, that's just how it, how it works. So, they do the wrong thing by trying to present themselves as this strong. And, and you see it in the, the rom-coms, unfortunately, right? Every single plot of most of the, the new romantic comedies is high-powered executive woman can't find a guy, right? And then finally, this guy who she's not sure, he's not sure if he likes her at first because she's abrasive. He gets through to her soft core, and then he loves that she's such a powerful and strong woman. But that's not reality. So, uh, next one is uh, doing things. I had to type these up pretty quick there. Doing things to attract that attract low value men, right? So, if you want to attract a lot of low value men, post provocative pictures online, right? High value guys are gonna say, "Yeah, this I don't like that this girl is like posting her sexuality all over the place," right? D being disrespectful. Low value guys will respond to disrespect really well. They'll love it. They're like you abuse the low value guy, he will keep on coming back for more. He just loves to get hurt. You know, it's like that. What's that? That that song, the uh, the Offspring song, the self esteem. It was like, you know, the more you suffer, the more it shows you really care, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what low value guys think. And, and a lot of women are used to working with low value guys and doing that because they know it's a game you can play to get a guy, but it doesn't work on high value guys they don't care. Same thing with playing text games, right? You know, it's good advice if you have the average Joe to, you know, play some text games with them, not respond for a couple days, whatever. If you're dealing with a high value guy and you're playing games, 
he, he's already got too many other girls that he's texting. He's just going to forget about you. Feminist remarks and association. Gosh, my spelling is not so good. But so if a guy that is of high value sees a woman who is associated with feminist, uh, feminist movement is making a lot of comments on social media about women's liberation and all of these things that are going to be man-hating, he's just he's not going to deal with it. It's not worth it. They're, he's just going to pass and move on. And, and maybe he will sleep with you, like sleep with a girl that, that does that. But then he's not going to want to get into any kind of long term. He doesn't want to have the discussion about feminism and, and to, to deal with that. So uh, you know, he, he may get what he wants and then move on. But he's not looking at a long term partner for someone who hates men. Right? Uh, and then not paying compliments, actually not pumping the ego. This is, again, I guess I could put that in the category of things that you can do to attract low value men is, is not. Uh, but I think a lot of women think that by not paying a man, like if you're dating a guy that is, is attractive or is of high value, by not pumping up his ego, that that will, will be a good thing. It's actually a bad thing because one of the things that the, the, that high value men like, or that men like in general, is to have their ego stroked, right? <laughs> it's, it's true. It's a good way to, to get, a, get a man in. Because, and that's why you, know, you hear all these stories of, of, of guys that maybe they, they cheat on their wife with their secretary, and their secretary is actually not, not, not as attractive as their wife. The reason why is because she treats him like a king. She gives him all this respect. She gives him all these compliments. He feels like a man when he's around her. Whereas his wife is constantly nagging him and telling him what a what a bad guy he is and, and how horrible he is and you know and all the bad things that he's doing. So paying compliments is actually a good thing. And that was one of the things that I was telling you the story about the girl that had that I was talking to on Instagram. I was like, well, when you're going on dates, what guys give me, you know, what are you talking about? It's like, and you know, she was talking about some of the banter, and I was like, wow, like. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that like t tell him about like how how strong he is and like you know how you know how, how like you, you're just attracted to to how manly he is and, and things like that then he's gonna he's gonna think oh you know I could go out with with this this other girl or I could go out with this girl that makes me feel good when I'm around her all the time again it's, it's not being insincere it's like fine actual sincere things it's just it's just a matter of of not holding back the, those things that you think you should hold back which you should perhaps with, with normal guys. So let me tell you what high value men are looking for. So this is, this is something that I think is important. It's not 100% physical beauty, right? So this is a big mistake I think that a lot of women make is that they think that what, what high value men are looking for is the same thing as what the average guy is looking for. And it's, it's not true, and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because most guys, right, the majority of guys, will only value a woman based on her physical attractiveness. That's the only thing they care about. I know that's a harsh reality, but that's the truth. That's most guys. But the good news, the saving grace to this, is that if you're a guy that has had access to a lot of women, then what happens is that you've had that 10 over there that every guy wanted. You've had that really hot girl. You've had her multiple times or different girls and you get to a point where you realize that it's actually not that good. That it's sometimes a little bit better than picking the hottest girl that you could possibly get to go with a girl who actually makes you feel good, is fun to be around, has some other things going for her in her life and personality. Maybe on the, you know, the one to ten scale, this other girl is a seven and a half. And so you say, hey, I don't, I, I'm going to pass on the 10, I'm going to go for the 7.5 who's, who's a really good person who I actually like to be around and I would actually want to spend my time because I've had all that before. But the reason why I point this out is because it's different than the average guy, right? The average guy that doesn't have access to that, that could never bag a 10, let's say that, he, he thinks that that would be the greatest thing in the world. And so his, his value system is based completely on physical beauty. Whereas actually the higher value guys, they're not basing it completely on physical beauty because they have other standards because that's not the, the primary criteria anymore. 
that makes sense. I know it seems really counterintuitive, but it's 100% uh, it's true. And I've talked to a lot of guys, a lot of guys that I coach, by the way, fall into this category, right? A lot of guys I coach are multimillionaires, have a lot of success, are ripped, and, you know, and, 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 and I'm helping them get to the next level in their business. And I always run this by them. I'm like, hey, if you had a girl that looks like a supermodel, or you had, and, but she's a complete bimbo and has no brain at all, and just like is annoying, and you had this other girl that's, you know, your average like girl next door. She's attractive, right? But you know, but but you just you just vibe with her really well. You connect with her. You know, you, you have a good time with her, and and you have a lot of fun. Which would you choose? And they always tell me the same thing that they they would choose. But when I when I pose the same question to some of my other coaching clients that that aren't very successful, that aren't what I'd consider a top five percent guy, they always say. Why, that's a silly question. Of course I would choose the hottest girl. And I'm like, okay, so that's how I know. All right, femininity. So, I mean, I don't really need to like go into a lot of detail to define what this is, but just because most of the, especially the younger women that I talk to have no idea what femininity is. And I get it. I mean, masculinity is something that is concrete. Right? There's not more than one way to be a masculine man. You're masculine or you're not. But femininity kind of looks like a lot of different things. It, there's a lot of variations of femininity in my experience. So, you know, girly stuff. Doing girly stuff. I think so many girls today are afraid to do girly stuff. It's attractive. It's attractive. It's feminine. Wearing a dress. This is a huge one. This is like, you know, if you take one thing from this talk, like wearing a dress is, is big. Going on a date wearing a dress. You know, most, most guys that are of high value, they're going to say, oh, yeah, I, I, I like you already, right? Uh, being soft, not being so harsh. Again, the world is hard place. A lot of women try to, again, what I said with the text games and the being disrespectful and stuff, it's like trying to show I don't need a man, I'm an independent woman. You know, that'll work on, on low value guys all day long. But on a high value guy, he's going to appreciate that you're actually tender and soft and vulnerable because that's going to bring out his protecting instinct and you know, the damsel in distress thing. Uh, fun and playful, again, just a, just a part of being feminine, I think. And then nurturing. Nurturing, I think, is really, really key. You can, you can, you can win a guy that you wouldn't be able to win by, by showing the, the nurturing side, which, again, it's something that so many women today, they try to hide all this stuff. They have this stuff inside, but they're trying to hide it because they think it's unattractive, because they think it'll make them seem too desperate. They think it'll make them uh, seem unattractive. And, and maybe for low value guys, like I said, that are mostly judging on, on looks, it would, but for higher value guys, it doesn't. This one's probably come up a lot, I'm guessing in this room, I haven't been in here a lot, but respect. This is like a key thing for men, is you know, looking up to them, right? Uh, you know, trusting his judgment, following his lead, sub submitting, in, in the sense of, of following the lead. And it's interesting, I think the whole submission thing, I was listening to, uh, what's his name, Tex Texas Dom talk, and, and, and I tell guys about this all the time because cause I talk about being a dominant alpha male, like how to be dominant. And what it comes down to, what I tell guys, is that it's about having standards and using your feet to walk when people don't meet your standards. It's not about forcing anything, it's not about threats, it's not about controlling, it's the opposite of that, right? The more dominant you are, the less you have to do. Because when you are dominant, when you have mastered yourself, when you have a high standard for yourself, and your, your weapon of choice is to remove your attention or to remove yourself from people who don't appreciate you or who don't meet your standards, that's, that's, then people do want to submit to you. Then women do want to submit to you. And so when I talk about submission, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about any kind of forced submission. I'm talking about this idea of, of voluntarily saying, okay, this guy, I want to follow his lead. I want to make him feel like a, a big, strong man and a protector. Purity. And this is a big one. It's one that you can't really like reverse. The other things you can change, but, but at least the image of purity, right? Not selling ourselves to the world I talked about. You know, one way to definitely not get a high value man is to have an Instagram that has pictures of your ass all over the place. It's not gonna, he's gonna look at it and be like, yeah, 
I would like to go on a date with that girl one time, or maybe two times, but I'm not gonna stick around. Like, I, I don't wanna see a girl that is showing her ass to everyone in the world, right? Uh, guys want sexuality reserved for themselves. Uh, not many sexual partners. Again, I talk to young women all the time about this and tell them how, you know, wh what I honestly believe is, I spend a lot of time thinking about this, is that the more sexual partners that you have, the harder you become. For a man, that's a good thing to a, to a level, to a degree, right? As a man gets more experience, has more sexual partners, he's not that wussy guy that wears his heart on his sleeve anymore. He's a little bit tougher. He's a little bit harder, right? He's not as emotional. He's, he's a little bit more distant and reserved and, and non-attached, which is a good thing in general for a man, that we kind of value that in a man, right? He should still have the ability to connect. He should still have the ability to experience and, and share emotion for sure. But that hardness that's created by a high number of sexual partners is generally a net benefit for a man as far as his attractiveness, let's say, right? Women are generally attracted to men who have more sexual experience. But for women, that hardness is bad. It makes you more masculine. So in my, in my experience, especially talking to a lot of the, the young women that I coach, the more sexual partners they have, the more they're able to operate like a man, the more that they're hard and they develop some sense of masculinity. They, they lose their ability to form attachment. For a man, having too much attachment, being too needy is a weakness. For women, it's a bonus. It's a, it's a plus. A, a guy wants to be with a woman who really wants to be with him and, uh, and, and makes him the center of her world. Whereas if a guy makes a girl the center of, her world, of his world, it's not good, he's not attractive anymore. Not promiscuous. Again, this, this goes along with that, but just the idea of, of being promiscuous. It's gonna be a filter. Every guy that is high value, one of the questions he's gonna ask or figure out is how promiscuous is this girl, and that's gonna decide whether he's gonna see her again. So physical beauty does matter. Right? It, it doesn't matter as much as, as, like I said, but it does matter for sure. Uh, and, and part of it is just because that's the first thing that attracts a man is, is physical beauty, regardless of high value or not. Just, let's just be honest here. Men are, are visual. But the key to, I think, this, and this is what really makes a difference, is making herself look attractive for him. When, there, when, when a guy feels like a girl makes herself attractive specifically for him, not to go out and get attention from other guys while they're out or to be seen, but specifically makes dolls herself up for him, that, that makes, then he's like, okay, this, is, this girl might be a keeper, right? Uh, and not fake. There's so much fake. I see so much fake, fake lips, fake hair, fake eyelashes, fake everything, and you know, to be honest with you, most, most guys that are, are high value, again, they've had the fake supermodel 10 before, they don't like it. It doesn't feel real, it doesn't feel authentic, so they'd rather see a girl that, that makes herself look beautiful but doesn't resort to all of the fakeness that's, that's out there in the world, uh, you know. Personality, I talked about this before, but, you know, looking for a girl that's fun to be around, has a brain, actually. You know, again, we're talking about uh, the difference between high value men and, and low value men, but this is, these become important at that point. Uh, real and authentic. Here's one that I think would not be obvious, which is not afraid to disagree respectfully and calling them out, right? You know, a, a lot of guys that are used to getting a lot of women, they're used to women doing whatever they want and saying whatever. And it's like, I was talking to one of my coaching clients and I was like, I can, sometimes I feel like I can literally just say anything and it doesn't matter, right? And that's actually not a good feeling. Like when, if you could just say anything and the person doesn't actually care about you, they're just like, oh, this guy's hot or this guy's, you know, whatever. He's, he's a status and it's like, oh, okay. So I can, I can literally just tell you all kinds of shit and you're not gonna care, you're just gonna, you're not gonna call me out on anything, right? So when a girl calls a guy out, what, what that says is that I have some respect for myself. Hey, wait a minute, you can't get away with this. I'm not just gonna fawn over you just because you're hot. I, I actually have some value and some self-respect. And so many women don't have self-respect or value today. And uh, so that, that does 
that does set you apart. Again, respectfully disagreeing, right? Not being disrespectful and, and being, uh, uh, being nasty, so. And then I put this one, youth maybe, right? I mean, obviously, you know, you've, you've been here at this, this convention. I don't need to tell you about the wall and all that stuff. There's some truth to it, of course, right? But I put maybe here because again, like I said, for lower value guys, youth is absolutely 100% just with beauty right there. Like they're gonna want the, the youngest, youngest, hottest girl they can find. But a high value guy at some point in his life might say, wait a minute, hold on. I'd rather be with a girl that's maybe a little bit older, but the, the girl that is actually someone who I like to be with, who actually is a good, genuine person and is fun to be around. And, and we, we, you know, I was just having a discussion with a, with a high value man in the hall who, who made this decision today or like a couple days ago because it's true, it's true. So, you know, so, so youth is still important, but you know, it doesn't mean that you can just wait forever, but uh, you should, and that's why I tell like younger girls especially is, hey, while you're, while you are in the, you know, category of being hot and youthful, like maximize that, like, that, like don't play around and lose all your purity and become hard and then think that when you're 35 or later that then now you're gonna go and find the same guy that you had access to before. You're probably not, right? Let's, let's be honest. Instead, use that time when you're at your best uh, to, to lock down what you want to, to, get a, to get a good guy. I tell guys the same thing except the opposite. I tell guys, wait a minute. I tell guys, wait till you're like 35, you got your shit together, you're fucking jacked, you know what I mean? You got money, you know who you are, you've had some experience with women, and now you can be discerning, and now you can get all those girls that you didn't, that you couldn't get before when you were younger instead of just marrying the first girl that you see. So, let's see, okay. So what can you actually do to attract and keep a top 5% man? Forget about feminism. It will not get you what you want. So many women are all about feminism, but you know, Again, I probably don't need to talk about that in this room again because I'm sure plenty of guys before me have, have already railed pretty hard on feminism, but it's not good. The feminism that we have today, it doesn't, it doesn't really benefit you. It doesn't really benefit anyone, and it's not going to get you the guy that you want. And instead, though, embrace femininity, right? Learn to be feminine. This is, this is an interesting one. I think if someone put a course together on how to be feminine, they would make a fortune because I get this question all the time. It, it's, I can teach a guy how to be masculine. That's, that's pretty easy. I guess maybe because guys have to become masculine because they have to become men, but like teaching a woman to be feminine is, is pretty damn hard. It, it's, it's, not, it's not as easy. It's, it's a more of a moving target. But, uh, but yeah, so, but, but learn to it. You know, I, I think probably the best advice I'd have is to be around lots of feminine women and to do uh, feminine things, like to, to allow yourself to be girly, right? And then, and then I'll say about this is polarity. If you want a very masculine man, you have to be very feminine, right? So a lot of times, the guys I'm talking about, the top 5% guys, they're gonna be very masculine. So if they're very masculine, they're gonna be attracted to very feminine women. We have that sexual polarity that, that's important. And so the more of a masculine guy that you have, the more of a feminine girl you're gonna to have to be to attract that guy. Whereas, like I said before, a lot of women are making the mistake of becoming more masculine in order to try and attack, uh, attract a hyper-masculine man, and that's never gonna work. Enhance your beauty as natural as possible. I already talked about this a little bit, but you know, looks are initially gonna attract a man. Jay was talking about getting in shape. It's a good idea for sure. Getting in shape is something that you do have control over and you, you can do, and, and really, you know, Many, most, most women today, most people today in the US are, are, compl are out of shape or obese or overweight. Like getting in shape is gonna set you apart for sure. It makes a huge difference. Avoid fake, like I said, all the fake stuff. There's so much fake in the world today and you know, wear feminine things, dresses, you know, stuff like that, that maybe, and, and I think some of this too is, is, is stuff that could get you made fun of like, why, why are you doing that? Because there's so much of this uh, feminist attitude in the world today. So when, in my experience, really feminine women, sometimes they have it hard because they, they get it from the other, from the other women. And, uh, and it's, not always, it's not always nice, but 
So another tip I have is go places where high value men are, right? So the gym, higher, especially higher end health clubs, it's a good place to find, you know, where, where do high value men ha hang out. Social events, you know, especially charity events and things like that. Bars at conferences. <laughs> I mean, like think about it, like doctor conference, lawyer, like conferences here, like things like that where you know that there's gonna be a bunch of guys that are in the top 5% and that's where they're gonna be hanging out is at the bar at the, at the conference. Churches, of course, uh, higher end nightlife, right? So like the more expensive places to go, not trashy bars, right? You know, if you find trashy bars, you're gonna find uh, lower value guys. Clubs and meetups, like social clubs, real estate investing club, right? Meetups for business, young entrepreneurs, right? Uh, those type of things are going to be good places. Be approachable. This one, I wouldn't imagine that I would have to say, but like make eye contact, smile, right? Actually be approachable so that a guy can actually approach you and, and talk to you. And then watch out for your friends. So your friends, a lot of times, will, will try to prevent you from actually interacting with a guy because they're jealous. And so. You just have to watch out for that when you go out, for sure. No sex on first dates. It's weird for me to be on a stage telling, saying this <laughs> statement. I'm used to saying the opposite statement, but I'm giving you the, the truth. If you really want to lock down a high value guy, that's maybe not even the second or the third, honestly. Like, you know, I think most, most, most guys, to be honest, right, in this world, after threes, that would be pushing it probably the way things are. I mean, you can, whatever your religious values, I, I don't have a problem with that, but I'm just saying. So, but definitely not on the first. At least we can all agree on that. And, uh, and that will make a huge difference. A lot of the guys, the ghosting won't happen if you don't do this, right? You have some respect for yourself. Make him feel like a man. Make a man feel like a man. This is probably the, the most solid advice I can give you to to have a guy be attracted to you is to make him feel like a man. Men are easily manipulated by making him feel like a big, strong man. And, and the reason why this works so well is because it doesn't happen so much in society today because of all the, the feminism that we have and the, the you know, alpha women and, and trying, to, tr trying to be more masculine is that it's, like, it's degrading to be like, oh, big, strong man. But you know what? That, that's the thing that's going to really attract a big, strong man. Treat him like a king. This is another one that uh, is somewhat controversial. But you know, when I talk to guys all the time about, about relationships, you know, again, talking to high value guys, and I ask them about what is, the, the, what is the criteria, what's the single biggest selection criteria that you use in order to determine whether a woman is worth keeping around, and it's this, it's tre tre some variation of this. I use this terminology of treating him like a king. Making, making your man feel like he's a king, right? I always tell guys, like, treat her like a princess, she treats you like a king. And that, that generally is, you know, not the queen part. See, this is where I think, uh, you know, when I say this, women say, oh, well, well, he should treat me like a queen. It's not quite. It's more like a princess, right? Because the, the queen is like, oh, we have equal power, or like, you know, we're ruling the throne together. No, you gotta treat the man like, like he's the king. And, and he will respond to that and he will act like a king. You want a man to act like a king? You gotta treat him like a king. Uh, support him on his mission. Again, really important. Guys that are high value have a lot of stuff going on. They're building businesses, they're, uh, they're, they're doing a lot of things in their life. They're not putting women number one in their life, right? And you have to understand that a guy that is high value is never gonna put you number one in his life. And you wouldn't be attracted to him if he did. You would lose all attraction to him if he said, I'm building my whole life around you. Women build their whole life around a man. And there's nothing wrong with that. But a man that builds his whole life around a woman is not going to be attractive at all. And so supporting him on his mission, that's important. That's what guys are looking for. They're like, OK, well, I'm busy. What does this girl add to my life? She's attractive. OK, I like her. Is she actually helping me on my, my mission in life? If so, that's, that's someone that you want to keep on, on board. Have standards and self-respect. I talked about this in regards to you know, all the things that I talked about here. But it's amazing how many women don't have any kind of standard or self-respect. Right? I just had an example of a, of a girl that had, had said uh, 
to one of uh, one of the guys I was coaching that, you know, he, he invited her somewhere, and she's like, you know, I'm I'm not that kind of girl, right? Like she actually like pushed back, and and I was like, okay, good, that's good. She actually has, you know, this is a girl that you should actually follow up on. So, uh, show a high degree of investment. This this one's interesting. Again, a little bit counterintuitive. You do this with a, with a lower value guy, and, and it might not work so much, but. Today, with all the dating apps and all the stuff, actually showing investment is actually a, a, a bonus, a benefit. It's like, you know, guy looks back and says, hey, actually, you know, this girl actually, she, she drove all this way to see me. Wow, oh, that's, uh, that's rare. Like, well, this, you know, she, she went through all this, this effort to like move around her schedule so that she could be with me and make some time with me. Okay. Like, it, it, it's, you know, it, it shows that that you actually care, that you're actually, you know, value the guy, right? Uh, again, a lot of the advice you get is the opposite. Like, oh, don't show you care too much. Don't show that you actually, you're right. It's, it's gonna work with low value guys all day long. They'll, they'll love it, they'll eat that up. They'll be like, oh, I just, what, what is she thinking about? I wonder what, what her text meant. They'll be, you know, in tears. Like, I don't know if she, like, why doesn't she respond? A high value guy is just gonna, not gonna care. That, so the investment will actually work. The opposite will work because they're like, wow, all these other girls, they're just like, whatever. And this girl actually, she seems to really, really like me a lot, like for more than just being attractive or, or whatever, you know, or status or. All right, that's it. Questions? All right, I'm ready, I'm ready for the firing squad. All right. <laughs> Okay, two questions. So you use the term alpha woman uh -huh. quite a bit. When we, when we say alpha man, we're talking about an authentic, genuine, masculine man. Mm -hmm. That is the definition of an alpha man, or one of the potential definitions. But when we're talking about the alpha female, the go-getter, business, career woman, she's not being authentic or genuine mm -hmm. or feminine. So is that really an alpha? It's good question. So it depends on how you, how, what you say alpha is for as far as a female, right? So to me, alpha it just itself is a masculine term, right? Why would a woman want to be alpha anything? Like to be the best, the winner, right? That's like a masculine idea. Women are egalitarian by, by nature and men are hierarchical, right? That's a hierarchical thing. Like we say, this guy's the alpha, he's, he's higher. Whereas women want everyone to kind of be on an even playing field. So I think that the, the term, that's why I use the, the term that way is because it, it, it connotates masculinity. If, so if, a, if a woman's trying to be an alpha female, what she's actually trying to do is, is be an alpha male, right? That's, that's how I view it, so. But just remember one thing in the scientific world, especially with primates, and I'm just gonna go with primates, I'm not going with anything else. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are alpha females. Yeah, and yeah, of course. And they run the path. Okay, and then there are alpha males. I'm just letting you know, so it's not that females want to be males. Right, yeah, I'm talking in terms of human sexuality, right? Yeah. Like we're, we're part of the animal kingdom. Right, but there's bonobos and chimps and they have completely different mating behaviors versus like well, who's not, alpha. Well, I'm not talking about mating behaviors, I'm talking about the whole structure as a community. And right. the chimps and the bonobos are, you know, they're chimps, so like with, um, with apes, you know, like with gorillas, it's a whole different hierarchy. It's different. They have like what's called, you know, you have one male ape and then you have a bunch of females. With um, chimpanzees, it's different, even though they're apes than yeah. monkeys. I mean, I could go into. A let's whole let's talk about this but offline. Let's get, let's get to the next question. But no, I know, but yeah. what I'm just saying, I want him to realize what else. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just wondering how it, um, how it might look to like stroke a man's ego or like compliment him, make him feel like a man. Um, I guess that does, it's not like really my forte, or something. <laughs> but <laughs> it may be like give some examples or. Oh, like examples of, of how to like make a man feel like a man, basically, like how to. So, I mean, just like little things like when you see, I mean, l l like something small, like he opens the door for you, and you're like, oh, wow, I, I love how you how you you open the door for me, and like, or or you know, 
lifts you up and is like, oh, you're, you, you're so strong, you know, uh, or, or even just, just ordering, like at the restaurant, right? If a guy, like, if you're out to dinner with a high value man, I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to ask you what you want, okay? And then he's going to, when the, the waitress or waiter comes, he's going to order for you and himself. And then you could say, oh, I like how you, how you did that, how you took charge and how you, how you ordered for me. I haven't had a guy that, that does that before, right? As opposed to what he might be used to, which is some, some girl trying to give him shit because she's feminist and she's like, oh, I can order for myself. Okay, well, yeah, you can order for yourself, but you're probably not going to see the guy again, right? So, like, when he's trying to do things that are masculine, like appreciating those things and saying, I, I appreciate that, that, you, that you're, you're this guy, right? As opposed to, because his whole life, right, in the society that we live in, as, as a, is, is the opposite. It's right, he's fighting against the stream, right? Because, you know, like, you know, take, take just this whole convention, right? With Anthony, what, what he's been doing, he's getting a lot of shit for this, right? So he's used to getting a lot of shit for this, right? So most women that he talks to on the street, they're gonna give him shit for this conference and for, for what he's doing and think that he's a bad person, all this stuff. But you know what? If, if, if you're walking down the street and you see Anthony and you're like, oh, I really love what you're doing for women and you're a woman, he's gonna be like, huh, this is, this, is, this is a goal, I love this girl, right? You know what I mean? Because, cause, cause you're, so it's the same thing, right? A guy that is, is masculine and is, is a high value guy, he's used to getting shit all the time from feminist women. And so if you show up and you're like, oh, I love that you're masculine. I love that you're, you know, that you're taking charge, right? It's, the op it's refreshing for him. He's like, okay, I can be myself and actually be appreciated for being this guy that I am as opposed to being attacked and having to deal with all of these, these conflicts and, and stressful situations. I don't want to be in that situation. I want to be with a girl who actually makes me feel good, who who's, is refreshing, who's, who's glad to be around a, a guy. Even though he knows, right, because this is the thing I tell guys all the time, is that even though you know, feminist women tend to say that they don't like masculine men and don't like masculinity and call it toxic masculinity, you know, I always tell guys, like, you know, on the other side of it, I'm like, if you see a girl that's really feminist, she, she's going to really like you if you're masculine, right? Because secretly, she wants to, you know, the same thing is like, you know, I think, was, what's the name? Texas Tom was talking about like Fifty Shades of Grey, right? It's like the best-selling book ever for, you know, who's reading that book? I mean, we live in a society that's mostly feminist. So is it just the only non-feminist women that are reading that book? No. It's because it's the same fantasy. It doesn't matter if, if you're feminist or not. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. Everybody needs some form of validation, and I don't see why a man would be any different. Right. So if the man, if his goal is to be masculine, he wants to be validated as masculine. So to give him a compliment or to do something nice for him, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you really want to keep that. So yeah. I don't, I don't see anything. I think because because so many women are given the advice of trying to play hard to get in that in that respect, which like don't give compliments, don't like don't do these things because then he'll think that you're needy and that you like him too much and you're 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 playing your card, you're showing your cards, whereas the, what what you said is is more accurate. So yeah, that's all the time we have. Give it right. up for John Summers. We could win this war. We can win this war. Okay, well, joining us from Orlando, Florida, is the man in that clip, Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. No, but it also crazy. says, with a trademark, make women great again. Full women, always, always great. great. Right. Make women great again. But they're going to do a three day seminar for women led by all men. <laughs> In mansplaining news, a three-day conference for women led by men hopes to make women great again. How the 22 convention will make you the greatest you ever. Raise your femininity by 500%. First of all, how is a man supposed to tell a woman how to be the ultimate woman?
<laughs> well, women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, Not my yes, words. we do. Like how to land a husband, <gasps> how to lose weight, how to pop out a bunch of kids. Why do men think they need to fix the problems of women? Well, it says the world's ultimate event for women. In Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. It's mansplaining palooza and say no to the toxic bullying feminist dogma. <laughs> taught by men to make women great again. Taking the stage now is the founder of the 22 convention. You're in for a treat, Mr. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. The first president of the manosphere. It's run by all men, Surprise. which promises to, quote, make women great again. This course is guaranteed to raise your femininity by 500%. Together, we will make women great again. Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. She said there's nothing...